for us, the hardest thing was finding Wofford. We've been, Jim's been here, I don't know, 15 times. I've been here t seven times, and we still got lost for 40 minutes in Spartanburg, downtown Spartanburg. I've never been the one doing the driving, and I've been lost with everybody, but this one puts them all to shame. We were out there for 40 minutes. We finally had to have Daryl come find us and bring us to camp. <laughs> yeah, I, we were we drove by places four and five times. Oh, it is amazing. Lord. I noticed. Hey, we saw. Well, I was just taking you on the tour, Jim. I know you never had the Spartanburg downtown tour. <laughs> yeah. Um, Marty, we've been talking to a lot of players, and, and it's been one common theme. Every guy that not every guy, but a lot of the guys that step up are young guys that now are being counted on to really get it done. And that that's obviously the theme of this year. Um, what? How how concerned are you when you make a decision? that, hey, we're going to go with this youth movement or whatever whatever label we want to put on it, we're really going to count on these young guys. How much does it keep you up at night? Because a lot of a lot of these young guys have to really hit them out of the park for you. Well, I don't think it keeps you up at night. There, there, there's, and at least for me, there's anxiety in every decision you make. I mean, I, you know, when we have been in years where we've brought 21 and 22 starters back, and, and you know, we haven't had the season that we had hoped for. So, um, you know, the, the bottom line is it's not whether it's it's young players or veteran players, it's it's the players you think that you have a chance to win with. And I think that you don't get a feel for that until you get into the season, get through, you know, training camp, preseason games, regular seasons, it's all, all kind of steps. And right now, after four days, you know, there's a lot of positive things right now. And I think that we have young players, but we don't necessarily have inexperienced players. I think this has been something where um, I think we've drafted to the point where we know the type of players we want. I think we've drafted well, and I think that we've got some young players in the pipeline, so to speak, that have gotten experience and that we are counting on this year. I think we saw at the end of last year we had some young guys step up and, and we had some success. And, and I think if you do it the right way, um, you know, I said the other day, somebody asked me if it was a rebuilding year. I don't think that there is a such thing as a uh, rebuilding year because that means that, you know, it, losing just hurts too much. That's, that's not the goal. The goal is to be consistently competitive. And I think that to do that, you have to make hard decisions every year and you have to turn your roster over. And, and um, we'll see. You're right. There's a lot of new faces. There's a lot of young players. But, you know, so far so good. Now, I, I, and, and a couple of, a bunch of the young guys are quarterback. And it seems like... There's some real good, exciting stuff going on by all accounts at, at quarterback. Matt Moore apparently has been tremendous. Jimmy, really good. Um, what's Do you have a plan with, with those two guys? I mean, I know we haven't even kicked off this season, and I'm looking down the road, but you guys have to look down the road. I mean, is there a plan that Jimmy's the guy of the future and Matt's the guy of this year, or is this something that at the end of the year you, you evaluate? Do you anticipate both guys being here long term? I mean, how, how do you, what's the plan with those well, two? Well, obviously, number one is, you know, having is having two or three or four good young quarterbacks is, is, is Joe Gibbs, you say, a good problem to have. So, and I do think you let, you know, you go and you, you see how things play out, but we do feel like we have some talented quarterbacks and young talented quarterbacks. I think that, that, you know, what do you do in the future? Well, I think just like any position, you pay, you play the, the player that you think is going to give you the best chance to win. And um, I think that, that, you know, we have gone, we have, we have improved in that area as far as having um, several good, young, talented quarterbacks. And it's a good position to be in. And you just let it play out and see what happens. But uh, Matt has, has done everything, you know, we've asked him since he's been here. And he's had a... He's had a great start, and he just got a. He looks so comfortable out there, and he's got a presence about him. And and as you say, Jimmy's done well, and, I, and Hunter and Tony look good. So it's 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 a good, uh, it's an exciting position to watch, and it's a good position to be. In. You know, Marty. It, so more obviously, we know as a starter, and it would it would appear to uh, anybody paying attention to this team that Jimmy Clausen is the backup, unless he loses that job because of the contract. I, I know no one's going to say that, but that's just what it appears to everybody on the outside. You use the word pipeline. Now, if Moore is your starter, and then you've got these three quarterbacks, and I know how you feel about Hunter Cantwell. I know how you feel about all of them. Is it unlikely that all four of these quarterbacks can remain in the pipeline through this entire season? Well, I mean, if they're good enough, you hope they can. And I, I think one of the biggest differences between what you guys do and what I do is, is that um, it seems like you 
know, people on the outside always want to answer what's going to happen in three weeks. Right. And we have enough problems figuring out what's going to happen today. And I think you take it day to day and you let you let what happens dictate what happens. So, uh, obviously, of all four quarterbacks, if you think all four quarterbacks are good enough to play in the league and good enough to help you, then you do whatever you can to keep them. And what is that? How, how would you do that? There's, or, there's, say a lot of, there's a lot of different options that does no good to try to figure out today because until you get there, you don't know which options well, would be available. We're ignorant to the facts, and, and you're not. So uh, everybody manages to say something like this. The only way they could keep or hide, or hide all of them or keep all of them is for somebody to be on the IR, somebody to be injured. Is that is that the is that is that true? Well, no, of course not. I mean, you know, you could keep four quarterbacks on the active roster. It depends how things play out over the next three or four four weeks as far as numbers go. Um, you know, you could you could have one guy on practice squad. You could. It, it just depends. There's a lot of options, but until you get there, it's it's just really hard to say what's going to happen. And it's so it's such a domino thing, too, Marty. To, to to have that happen, to have four quarterbacks on your roster, you, uh, Armani's going to have to step up and become that punt return guy. And you can't just have a, a bunch of special team guys out there taking a spot on your roster if you're going to try to do that. If you're going to try to keep people around, so. That, is that one of the most important reasons why Armani needs to grab this job as punt returner? Well, no. I mean, Ar Armani's just a, a you know, and, and not to put too much pressure on mine because he's just he's a very good young talented player that we know uh, is making a transition in position. So we don't expect Armani to come in and be be in some coffee. We really don't. He is just he's a tremendous athlete who, who we feel has the ability to help us. Um, you know, now and down the road, but he's going to have a learning curve. I think that that we're going to have a competition as far as punt return or kick return. That was a goal coming in. Um, as far as the quarterback position goes, I, that doesn't have any. Uh, the, the, the biggest thing on the quarterback position when you keep four is, you know, how what happens health wise with your roster overall over the next three or four weeks. I mean, do you have, um, you know, is that fourth quarterback uh, a you know, more valuable to keep than maybe the last player at a certain position because maybe, you know, maybe a position's got hit by injuries and, and, and whatever. So it's just it's just a big yeah. picture thing that, you know, you have to put together and it's it's just hard to, to say right Just one last quarterback from me. Uh, does Moore look different to you this year now that he, <clears throat> well, to you as the GM, does he look different now that he knows it's his job? He proved himself in the last game of last year, and it's his job, it's his team, it's his ball. He, he doesn't look different in the sense that every time he's got an opportunity to go in games, he's stepped up and shown shown that calmness and, and that that leadership ability. Now it's just to a different level because he's that guy every day. He's that he's that starter every day, and in in that sense, he's not different. But in the sense that he is, you know, he knows he's the leader. He knows he's the guy. And he's just he's come in and handled it tremendously. Let's talk about Dwayne Jarrett. I mean, it's 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 become cliche to say this is his last chance. And and, and there's a feeling, a sentiment in guys covering this team that it, it, he could it could be sooner rather than later where where you guys part with Dwayne. I mean, is he in danger of getting cut if he doesn't have a good camp? Well, I don't. I, I think this. You look at the wide receiver position, and I think we feel like we have really created competition and some options there. Yeah. So I mean, everybody's in 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 a competitive battle there. So um, you know, he's he just one of the receivers competing for a spot. And I think that again, one of the one of the priorities this off season has been to you know upgrade our speed and upgrade our talent at, at, at the skill positions and wide receiver being one of them. And I think we've done that. So. I think there's just going to be there. There's been very good competition there at wide receiver. We've had a lot of guys stepping up, and you know, it's just going to be interesting to see it shake out. All right, now I got to ask you about all the uh, the guys whose deals will be up next year. I mean, this is a situation that you guys don't often get into, you, you, where you have you know star caliber players that that you know go in, get to this point in their contract, and have not signed anything. And you know the names are D'Angelo and. And Khalil's on there. Thomas Davis is on that list as well. Matt Moore's on that list. Getting a restricted free agent tender. It, it, why the change? Is it because of the collective bargaining agreement and the uncertainty? And then I know there's that 30% rule that limits the raises you can give guys. Is it just simply because of the climate business-wise, or is it something different well, you're doing? I mean, you say it changed. A couple years ago, we went in and, and to the last season with Julius Peppers and Chris Gamer and Jordan Rose. And I think John Casey was in that mix. So, you know, it happens sometimes. Um, 
I think that, that those guys know we want them. I think that you do whatever you can to, to, to uh, let them know that. I think that there are a lot of uncertainties, you know, as far as down the road, what the system's going to be, what the salary cap's going to be, how you're going to operate. I mean, when there is, a, you know, there's a lot of questions in place. So I think that, you know, you, you struggle with those and, and try to figure out how you're going to put everything together. But, um, you know, we have been in this position before. I think that the guys know that we want them, and hopefully we'll be able to, to you know, keep up. No, sounds good. Marty, we appreciate you uh, hanging out with us. Best of luck this year, and thanks for stopping by. And thanks, next guys. year we're going to want directions from you because our, <laughs> our directions did not work. Can we just follow you up here? I think you should drive next year. Oh, yeah. Oh, hey. We wouldn't be here at all. That's a good point, Mr. Smart, Mr. Wise Guy. Why don't you do it? Thanks, Marty. Thanks.